Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let's take a look at what's new in macOS Sequoia 15.2. So macOS Sequoia 15.2 is a pretty minor change in most respects, except we get some new features. And most importantly, some Apple intelligence features. So previously you could select some text like this and you could bring up the writing tools a number of different ways. I'm going to use control click and then writing tools. Now here you've got the writing tools like before and you can make friendly, professional or concise, but you could do more than that. So let's go to show writing tools to bring up the more comprehensive interface and notice at the top, there's now a prompt. So you don't have to stick with just these three options here. You could actually type something, anything you want, and it will attempt to rewrite the selected text. So for instance, I could just simply type as a poem and I press return and it's going to take that text and try to create a poem from it. And you can see it does that. And you could do a variety of different things, but not everything will work. So for instance, if I were to type like as Hemingway, then I press return and you could see it's not going to do that for me. But if I were to do something more reasonable, like say, uh, with shorter sentences, then it will give me a result for that. It certainly extends things further and gets the Apple intelligence writing tools more in line with what you could already do in tools like chat GPT. By the way, if you find these videos valuable, consider joining the more than 2000 others that support Mac most at Patreon. You get exclusive content, course discounts, and more. You can read about it at macmost.com slash Patreon. Now, another thing that you can do is you can compose text from scratch. So I'm gonna bring up the writing tools like before, but now without any text selected. And I'll go here and I could show writing tools, but there's also a compose option here. Either way, you can get to it and you can type a prompt. Notice the chat GPT logo there. This is going to use chat GPT for this. I could type something uh, I want here. So say I needed to have a paragraph uh, about, um, you know, how LED screens work. I could simply type that. It'll call to chat GPT and it'll give me some text as a result. And I could insert that or copy it. There's a variety of different ways you can use that. You can use it to generate lists, anything you might normally use a chat AI for, you can just do there just to compose some quick text. Now that last feature does point out how now chat GPT is integrated with Apple intelligence. And in fact, if you go to system settings and then you look at Apple intelligence and Siri, you will see down here, chat GPT under extensions, hinting that we may have more extensions here in the future. Chat GPT is just the first. You can also sign into your account. Now, you also have this little checkbox here for confirm chat GPT requests. This is because chat GPT is also integrated with Siri. So let's give that a try with Siri here. And in this case, we're going to get a result that doesn't use chat GPT. So you can see it just gives you the result and a source there. So you have to get more complex for it to trigger chat GPT. So here's an example that should work. So you can see there, it says working with chat GPT. So this did trigger it. And here I get a list and this is indeed from chat GPT. It even shows on the bottom that it is. And I'm sure this is going to be refined over time, but I was able to in testing, get answers for just about any question I asked. A lot of them, it just gave me an Apple intelligence. It looks like that's definitely improved over the last month or so, but also sometimes it did go to chat GPT and give me a list like this. Now let's go right to the next big Apple intelligence feature that was added, and that is Image Playground. So Image Playground is an app. So you launch it just like a regular app, like Pages or Keynote or something like that. And it comes up like this, and it asks you to describe an image, and it will try to generate the image for you. So very similar to other AI image generation tools. One of the things it does that is different, though, is it's really tied in to your photos. So you can barely see what's here at the bottom. The window for image playground is a little bit bigger than what I normally used to record at. Um, but you get the idea here. You've got a prompt, you've got some suggestions, and then you've got this key thing here, person. If I click on that, it's going to go to my photos and it's going to see what people it recognizes there. So the people part of your photos. In my demo account here, I've just got me. 
So I'll select me and it's going to put me there. And then I need to actually uh, choose some other things. I will choose, say, Starry Night and I will choose a beret. And it's going to combine those concepts and produce an image of me wearing a beret with Starry Night behind. Notice there are dots underneath. It's generating multiple versions of this and I can flip through them and see these. I could click outside here and come back to these. Let me take away the beret and instead put a beanie and then it's going to regenerate based on those. I could also generate some things based on my own text down here. So I could add a uh, moon to this and it should add kind of the moon. Now, once you've got this, you can click on the three dots here and you can copy this image. You can share it. There are also other things you could do uh, for person. You can also choose appearance and then create a person from a description here. You can also just type a prompt there and not include a person at all. So I'm going to do a road uh, into the mountains at sunset and press return. And I'm not going to take any of these other suggestions, but I'm going to get a image like this. And note, I can also change the style. I can go between animation or illustration. And this is a good example of something you can generate and then use that, say, in a keynote presentation or as an image in a pages document, that kind of thing. So I can find something nice to use in that situation. Now let's look at some other changes. If we go into Safari, there's a couple of changes you should note. One of them is if you go to File and then note the Import and Export options now get a lot more complex. It gives a bit more of a description of what's going on here for importing, what you can import, and also for exporting. If I go to Export, I actually get this whole little dialogue here, and I can choose what I want. So if I just want to export, say, uh, just bookmarks, I can do that here. I can choose which profiles it's coming from, and I could download them. So uh, this is an interesting new dialogue. Another thing you've got is when you're on the Start page, like here, I'm Bookmark Show Start page, uh, there's the Edit button here, and there are some new backgrounds here that you could apply to the Start page right here. In the News app, if you're a subscriber to Apple News, you've got under Puzzles a new puzzle type. Now you've also got Sudoku. So there's a daily Sudoku puzzle and it works really well, allows you to add notes, has all the features you would expect uh, for a Sudoku puzzle. Um, and yeah, you get a new one to play every day. So Apple continues to build its collection of puzzles here for Apple News Plus subscribers. Now a tiny new feature that is gonna get a lot of attention is the ability to put the weather in the menu bar. So this is something, of course, it's been available in other operating systems forever, and you could do it on a Mac with third-party apps. But now you can actually go into System Settings, and in System Settings under Control Center, the last item down here is under Menu Bar Only, Weather, and you can choose to Show in Menu Bar. And when you do that, you get a little weather icon and the temperature. But if you click on it, you get all the details, and it's going to correspond to the locations you've got in the Weather app. So your local area weather and then a forecast here and then other locations you've got are going to be listed here a link to open the weather app but you can also click on these things here and it will take you to the weather app as well another improvement is in airplay when you go to airplay now and i'm going to demonstrate using uh, displays and i'm going to add a display and it's going to be an airplay display so this is a tv that accepts airplay and what will happen here is it'll come up with a, a new dialogue that asks you if you want to mirror your whole display or a window or app. So you could choose that before you start using AirPlay. So that's a really handy feature to have there. Now, another big feature for those that are not in the USA, but in the other English speaking countries of Australia, the UK, Canada, South Africa, and New Zealand is that support has been added for the Apple intelligence features introduced in macOS Sequoia 15.1. When 15.1 came out, they only worked if you were in the USA using US English, but now they're available in those other countries as well. So for people living there, you've got not only these new features, but a lot of the new features that the US users have had for a month or so. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know.
I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.